this amazing video, we are going to learn about all the material selection, which is duplex, ferritic stainless steel, carbon steel or stantic stainless steel and how to select them. First, let us look into what is common between all of them. If you look, the word steel is common between all of them. So first, let us look into how is steel actually been made. Steel in its foundation has a very important element that is iron and iron constitutes the major element in steel. But now let me ask you a question. Do you think pure iron is strong? If your answer is yes, then it is absolutely incorrect. What? Pure iron is very soft, ductile and can be easily deformed. Now you might have the question then what do we do in such a case? So we add another amazing element which is carbon. As soon as you add carbon, what do you think happens to the structure? The structure becomes tough. Now it can withstand high pressures, high temperature etc. Now let us take an actual industrial example. ASTM A105 is a forged grade of carbon steel which is used a lot in valves. Let us look at the material composition. If you see here, carbon goes up to 0.35 percentage. And remember in carbon steel there are other quantities also. But the major characteristics are influenced by carbon, hence the name carbon steel. Let me ask you another important question. If carbon makes it so tough, can we keep on adding more and more carbon to the structure? Don't you think if we add more carbon, it will become more and more and more strong? The answer to it is no. Why? Because as the carbon increases, we face two important problems. First one is high corrosion and second one is brittle. The material becomes brittle. But isn't it confusing? We just said that carbon makes it hard, right? How can it make it brittle? The answer is can a material be hard and brittle at the same time? The true answer to it is yes, it is possible. Take for example glass. Glass is hard but as soon as a stone is hit it will break. So glass is hard yet brittle. Similarly if you increase the carbon percentage to more than 2.1% it will change to cast iron which is extremely brittle. So care must be taken for that. Now, the second question or the important point was what if the service is corrosive? What do we do in that scenario? If the service is corrosive, we add another amazing element which is chromium and it should be added in a good quantity which is at least 11% chromium. But what happens when we add chromium to this a phenomenon called as passivation happens which basically develops a flim around the material. You can say like sunscreen how we used to protect it from the sun rays. Similarly, this is used and this layer protects yourself or the material from corrosion and this family of materials is called as your stainless steel family. Now, the stainless steel family can be divided as per the structure into mercenic stainless steel, ferritic stainless steel and it can be divided into stentic stainless steel and duplex stainless steel. Let us look into all of these amazing concepts with the logic that you will remember forever. First thing is let's take an example of marsenic stainless steel with an actual real life example of SS410 which is extremely used in lot of valves. Now if you look at a material composition here you can see a difference. Let us compare it with ASTM A105 the forged grid of carbon steel. Now if you see here what happens is if you see the carbon percentage is reduced it is just 15% compared to maximum 0.35% that it can go that the change is really in chromium. If you see it has gone from 0.30% to 1313% it is a huge jump and if you see here that is the name common name of this material is also 13% chromium. Why? Because this element itself defines the major composition or the major characteristics of the steel. If you look here, iron is basically the major constituent still. If you see here, it is still 82.77%. Now, when we saw marsenic and stainless steel, how strong they are, how good they are. So, can you tell me what do you think is a limitation? One important limitation is the temperatures that they can be used. Here, they are having a temperature limitation. For example, SS410 at max can be used at around 500 degrees Celsius, but for all of these things, you need to detect and actually find out the type of surface composition so material engineer must be consulted but as a thumb rule it can say around 500 degrees celsius now the next thing is we add another amazing element into it which is nickel why because as soon as you add nickel 
something amazing happens. Nickel promotes the stability of austenite and this austenite is strong and more stable at higher temperatures and because of this we have an amazing element which is born which is austenitic stainless steel. If you look here let's take an amazing example which is always and always a best material choice which is SS316 it has been used in a lot lot of engineering projects now if you compare SS316 to we, what we just saw arsenic stainless steel you can see a difference here if you see here the nickel percentage is just 1% while if you see here the nickel percentage goes up till 12% there is a huge change SS316 has nickel up till 12% compared to 410 which is just having 1% now let us look at duplex and super duplex. What we do is we basically reduce the nickel component in it and instead we increase the component of chromium and molybdenum. What happens is now because nickel is reduced, the material is neither completely ferritic nor completely austenitic. And this addition of molybdenum has one important purpose that is to reduce corrosion. So basically whether it is spitic or whether it is cervic corrosion, these both things are greatly reduced with the addition of molybdenum. If you look at an example so that we understand it, let's take duplex 2205 which is a common material that has been used. If you see here the name is derived 22 is derived because the chromium percentage is increased up to 22. The nickel is reduced so it is nickel is up to 5% only. So this is how the common name has been derived for duplex. Now if you see that comparison, you can see a very clear comparison that chromium has increased from 18% to 22%. Nickel is decreased from 12% to 5% and molybdenum is again increased to 1%. But why do we do these changes? The answer is duplex and super duplex are very important for marine applications. But remember, because nickel is reduced, you have to remember that duplex will have temperature limitation. You can say approximately 300 degrees Celsius and super duplex can go little higher. Maybe you can say around 400 degrees Celsius, but a material engineer must be consulted for material selection. Finally, if you're interested to learn control valves in depth, then there is a free ebook available which covers amazing parameters like material selection, valve sizing, valve design and valve standards. The link is given in the description below. Please subscribe if you have liked the video. And I would love to give the credits to all of these people who have put so much efforts in material selection literature. The mechanicalengineering.com, Rahul Patil and waterspiping.com. Thank you so much for watching the video.